Good morning, everyone. It is Camille here from PrioritizeLove.com and I have the pleasure to interview the fabulous Robert Kirby from Heartfelt Relationships. Now, it's been a while since we've had a chat. The last time I remember was, I think about four or five days before I went into labor. So it's yes. been about oh, four months. I do remember that. Yes, you've got a good memory. So, so uh, welcome back. Things are happening for you, Camille. Uh, your little man is beautiful and he's, he looks so happy and at peace, so, uh, and you're, you're just glowing, so sounds like it's all good for you. It's all, it's all, it's all coming together after, the, you know, of course, the first couple of months, hugely challenging with sleep deprivation, but um, it's so much easier now. So oh. we're very happy, I feel very blessed. And Beautiful. great to chat again, and we just had a quick chat before we started the recording, and today we're going to talk about the importance of dropping the the big list that we sometimes have when we're ser searching for an ideal partner so we really wanted to have a chat about what is really important when we're looking for a life partner what is important to keep on our you know sort of criteria list and what is important to let go of yes camille i'm i'm so glad you brought this up because uh, the trend toward checklists that ha that uh many men and women have today has been always been a little bit of a concern for me. I understand, you know, the idea of goal setting and all that. And, and I'm, I'm all behind that and having a clear intention of what you're looking for in a life partner. Um, but if I've had people actually say on dates that they're, that are instead of really being present with the person, they're wondering, does this person, how many of the check boxes that does this person meet? And so I think sometimes, we miss the deeper importance because, of course, we want that, that attraction, um, you know, that charisma with someone else and the, the feeling of warmth and, uh, you know, knowing that this person is an affectionate person and a kind-hearted person. What I think is uh, maybe we should prioritize, um, does this person really get me? Do they really see the real me and can they love that part? And um, instead of my mask, because we all wear a mask, you know, we go dating and we want to put our best foot forward. But that's not the real us. I mean, there are social elements that we have to do, you know, being polite and showing up on time and things like that, agreeing on a meeting place and so forth. But when you get to know someone, if you're not sharing that true vulnerability of what you really want, then the person might think they get you, but they don't get you. Does that make sense? Absolutely. It's such an important point that you make and with the dropping the mask, I guess for, for and I, I coach mainly women, but from the female perspective, if we turn up on dates, not showing our true selves and then maybe the, the guy that we're dating, he might like the look of us, he might like, you know, the, um, the physical, but unless he sees the real us, then he might sort of fall in love with the idea of us. And, and it's, it's, it's the same is true the other way around. So yes, <laughs> yes, we do that. And the reason is that testosterone is, is, has a very visual component. And the estrogen, uh, my experience is that estrogen um, in the female has more integrity. Because I'll give you an example. Uh, a woman could see a guy coming out of the gym who's got a great physique and she might observe him. But she doesn't want to necessarily build a nest with him. You know, it's not that kind of thing. But with testosterone, it's, it's so visual. We look at a woman and we see the idealized version of her. And some then men, of course, they think it's their job to pursue. So they pursue. Um, but they're not necessarily connecting with the inner essence or the sub subjective elements of that woman. They're just objectifying her. I know you're familiar with that. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So what is, what is the key for, for people who, I guess, I guess another, another question I was going to ask before that question is, how do we get in our own way from actually really receiving the love that we crave? Like, how do we have those maybe false criteria that, that actually is, is our own way of, of sabotaging a potential great relationship? I'm, I'm glad you asked because, uh, you know, my opinion may differ from a lot of people. I think it's a protection. And so what happens is if, if, the, if, if you like someone, but they don't tick all the boxes, it's an excuse to step back instead of stepping forward. And if you're going to, you know, it's a risk. It's love is always a risk because someone could fall in love with you and six months later change their mind or, you know, go back to their ex. And we've all had these experiences and, and you know, get confused. And, 
and it can be gut-wrenching, can be very, very painful. But if you're hiding behind the checklist, <laughs> um, you always have one foot out. And then you don't get to be vulnerable and you don't really show yourself and if this person really loves you for who you are and instead of this sort of uh, outer sort of social mask kind of connection. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a super important point you make because I talk to a lot of women who they, they often meet someone and they say to me, like, he was nearly right, like he, but it just, no, that just wasn't quite, this didn't quite, you know, this box wasn't quite ticked or, and, and it's, an, it's, it's an ongoing pattern. So what you're saying is that is, that, that tends to be their way of protecting themselves so they don't have to take that risk of really entering something that could could really um, give them what they want, but it's also scary because they're getting closer to connecting on a real level. It's in the modern world, especially because people are so busy, so stressed more than ever. I mean, we're so far advanced in technology, but we've kind of left our emotions, emotional intelligence and social intelligence, we've left it behind a little bit. And so in some ways it's shocking to me People you know, make decisions on relationships based on such little interaction, not because the people are shallow, but they don't have time. You know, they're at work and you know, they, they're busy at night and so on and so forth. So they, they're making decisions, but they don't really let the other person in to that depth that they need to know, you know, should I really, can I really be with this person? Or could I let this person in, even though they don't tick 10 out of 10 of the boxes? You know, Even though they don't, they might not have the perfect body, or they might not have the perfect job, or that's that's the thing, exactly. isn't it? Exactly, because I think when people, when if someone really gets us and they love us for who we are, we feel seen and we feel embraced, and that's so important. And when we have that, and it's not that easy to find that. You know, you've searched. You know, for many years, and then decade, pretty much, I think it was. <laughs> what you did, Camille, is you did so much work on yourself to clear the patterns from childhood and from previous partners that you were really in the moment. And when we're really in the moment, and we're not still attached with that filter of who hurt us, um, then we can really drop our that social mask. We can drop our defenses and let that person in. And and maybe it will work. Maybe it won't. But at least when we're that vulnerable, we're that open, there's a much better chance of connecting and really being seen and felt and heard. I love that. Tell, tell me more, a little bit more about what that might look like or feel like for someone to be seen for who they truly are. Like what, how, how does a woman or a man know that the other person really sees their true self? Uh, to me, I think it's like you'll get a text message in the morning or late at night that, that gives a sign, that gives a feeling, or maybe even it's just something humorous, that, wow, they really saw me the other day when we, at dinner. You know, you'll get a message. It's almost like the universe saying, hey, this person really likes you, really likes you for who you are. It's not just, you know, sexual tension. It's, it's beyond that. This, this, they really hit your sweet spot, you know, and it's very tender when you get that. And if, if that person gets you, they'll let you know that they see you, uh, they see your inner beauty and your loveliness and, and your humility or you know, those beautiful qualities that we all have underneath our pain and so forth in our history. Um, if the person is tapping into that, you can say, wow, this person, this person's special. The, at least they're special to me because they see me. And they make me feel, you know, that warm, fluffy feeling. And so you, that's, it's a beautiful description. Thank you for sharing that because I think sometimes it's, you know, it's, it's hard for people to really understand what, what certain concepts mean. So what you're saying is that is really, if you feel that, if you experience that, you're already more than halfway there because yeah. there is a real, there's a real meaningful connection that yeah. then. They genuinely see you for who you are. And that's what we all want, isn't it? We want to be loved for who we are. Absolutely. There's a social pressure to be better than we really are. And that's all, you know, it's like being more than human. Um, and it's just covering up, you know, pain and historical stuff that we all have. But when we get beyond that, and we get beyond that by doing work on ourselves, by falling in love, you know, Camille falls in love with Camille and Robert falls in love with Robert. And then we're really available, aren't we? And we're not carrying that, that baggage, you know, uh, from our histories and family of origin with us. 
And it's hard to let it go completely, but we can let it go to a point where all that energy that's trapped in the past whew, comes back into this moment. And we have that to share. And it's beautiful. And then the other person can go, wow, this person, this person really cares. This person's really here. They really listen to me. So I think when we're in that place, because of the law of attraction and that higher vibration, we'll tend to attract a more similar person. But when we're scattered, overwhelmed, tired, or looking for someone to prop us up uh, or make us happy, um, you, end, you end up with two kind of, um, <coughs> excuse me, two lost souls or two people who are really scared. You know, they, they have a lot of uh, walls up and they have a lot of fear, protection around their heart. And you don't do it because you're not a loving person. You do it because you're in pain. You do it because you're, you're, you fear disappointment um, with this new person. And it's not a good expectation, is it? No, and then, and then I mean, the search of, for that perfect person can go on forever and ever. And there's, there's always a, a reason why, oh, well, that didn't work because. So what is, what is a good piece of advice for, for going, you know, for people who go on a lot of dates and they do tend to have that checklist, what could they do differently to be really present or to really actually allow the other person to, to see the, the true, the, the, the real, the real them and vice versa for them to see the other person. I'll tell you one little technique that works a charm. <laughs> um, we tend to be hard on ourselves and to that degree, will be hard on other people. And so a good way to do it is just sit in a quiet space and close your eyes and just observe your own character, your character strengths and your character opportunities and the way you interact with people, especially the opposite sex. And just observe it with no judgment. Just see yourself with pure love. And we know from quantum physics that anything we observe must change. So you have to get into that quiet space, Camille, and just observe yourself. And even if you did it, you know, two, three times a week, and you only need to do it for three minutes, just observe and there'll be rippling changes that you'll notice, that you'll be able to let go and break through some of the old patterns because we're, we're definitely creatures of habit, you know? We've been so conditioned, so many researchers have shown that by age seven, we're so conditioned by the dynamics of interacting with mommy and daddy and, and siblings and all that, that those patterns are there for life. Doesn't necessarily mean they have to remain there, um, but they often do because people don't take the time to really observe their behavior. They try to stuff it down. And so uh, when we stuff it down or we deny something, we end up acting it out or we attract it in another. So, yeah. <laughs> Hold on. So, so even, so even, during dates to really observe that 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 um, judgmental voice just to be the observer of ah oh, isn't it interesting that i've got all those oh well he's to this or he's to that or yeah. like even being aware and just holding that space will change things um dramatically so when you observe it without beating yourself up in other words with no zero judgment it will shift and, and you, you can see past that projection and start seeing that person for who they really are I love that. So apart from, from being seen and wanting to be seen and really f feeling that tri deep connection, what is also important to look for in a life partner? So for example, you know, is it important that they definitely want the same things in life or they have similar values? What's your take on that? I think values rule the world because if, if someone, um, let's say someone is a spender, and they want to see the world, they want to travel. They don't mind spending thousands of dollars uh, to go on a holiday every year overseas or wherever they decide to go, or you know, maybe they want to buy a flashy car or whatever. And the other person's a saver. You know, they want to save every dollar and invest it and be really practical, have a, a retirement. And um, you know, in the modern world, you have men and women uh, who fall into both categories, the adventurer and the person who wants, who really needs that safe cocoon around them. If those two people get together, it, it, it's going to be difficult. Um, so even though the sexual tension might be over, you know, through the ceiling, um, when all that wears off, and it eventually does, <laughs> you have uh, boy meets girl, and what do you really want in life? What's important to you? I think it's, it, makes, it doesn't mean you can't be with someone who has different values. It just, I think, makes life flow better. 
absolutely absolutely yeah. and I, I, it's 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 absolutely it's totally okay to ask the other person early on so you know tell me about your vision and you know what's really important to you i think that's sometimes um, my clients find oh you know is it okay to really ask those meaningful questions is that a bit too too heavy or but my my take is like ask those questions early on because then you really know and men as you you always say that men are really honest they they tell the truth especially at the beginning yes yeah, definitely. I, uh, you know, Chris, as you know, in, in the work that I do is, is uh, alternative as well. And I, you know, I work with lots of women and in coaching women, I say that you need to be a lot more selfish because your time is valuable. The clock is ticking and you don't have time to mess around for six months with this guy and a year with that guy. Uh, if you're not on the same page. So, you know, women will say to me, well, when should I find out first date? Absolutely. No. And if he can't handle it, then he's not your guy anyway, is he? Not your guy. Yeah. Be correct. So, yeah. Time is, you know, we're only here on this planet for a short time and you got to just put out there, you know, who you are, what you want. And I think if the cleaner you are with it, the more pure we get, the more we drop the judgments of ourselves and accept ourselves, our beautiful qualities, then we attract that person who's right for us. I love that. So some really, some really juicy, juicy content here. Um, so I'm aware of time. Of course, your um, heartfelt relationship workshop is coming up on the 4th of August. Is that yeah, right? That's correct. Yes, we have heartfelt relationships at 99 York Street, level two. Um, it goes from uh, 10 uh, a.m. to 4 p.m. And uh, there's a link that will attach uh, to this, this meeting. And people can just book online, um, and uh, you know we have gifts for people, uh, uh, eBooks and things like that that they can use. One of the things that's really cool too is that uh, we can test people's vibration if they care to. They don't have to have that uh, during one of the breaks to find out on a scale of one to ten how free is their flow of energy out to the world. It's good to know that because some people think that it's very high and it, not, it may be blocked and they don't know about it. And then there's things that we can teach them to do about. Yeah. Love that. And it is, it is for men and women. And uh, the great, the great thing is your workshops are extremely experimental. So they're not about just sitting there and listening. It's, not it's an experimental Lester. experience. Actually, it's an experience. I've been discussing the last 15 minutes or so, Camille, these there, there are processes that I have designed. Heartfelt relationships is 20 years old and I keep evolving it you know, into the modern world. And it's it, people go deeper and deeper, and then you meet new friends. You never know who you're going to meet there. <laughs> so you know, as you know, we've had a lot of people in our community meet and get married and have babies and all that. So it's still happening. I was just going to share. Actually, this is is it's spot on because one of um one of my past clients um attended your workshop, and then I think she did um attend like a, a full weekend workshop with you as well. Yeah. And we haven't been in touch in a while. And I just, I knew she was, she got married um, about a year and a half ago. And I just kept on thinking of her and I sent her a message yesterday. And I said, what's happening? She's like, Camille, guess what? I'm seven months pregnant. Oh, and um, she just, she sort of wanted to keep things quiet for a while. And, um, and yeah, she's just, and she said, isn't it great that, that my dreams came true? And um, it's just, it gives me goosebumps even talking about that. And then I said to her, well, your, your dreams came true because you really made it happen. Yeah. You know, so she, she did the work. And um, yeah, it's just such a beautiful story because I remember when she first came to me, she said, I just don't think it's going to happen for me. It's just, it's just not my path. I've, you know, I've done, all, I've done everything and I, it's still not working. And I'm like, come on, we can oh, do this. Right. And so it was the combination of, my work and your work that really turned things around for her. So wow, wow. super exciting. Oh, I said I'm very happy for her and that she deserves it. Once we get out of our own way, a lot of beautiful things happen effortlessly. That's very cool. Thanks for sharing that. So again, we're going to share the link underneath the, the video. And of course, we'll, we, will be, we will be touching base again soon. And, yeah, and conversations are to be continued. So great. Great as always having you um, Thanks, having you in the calls. Enjoy your time time with you as always. Have a lovely day. We'll talk soon. You too. Talk soon. Bye. Great to chat. Take care. Bye.